I'm very happy to be here today uh, to talk to you about something that, um, something that has been on my mind uh, for the last e one year or one year and a half. So before I, I start telling you about this, I would like to tell you just a little bit about the context uh, in, in which all of these ideas kind of came to me. Um, uh, again, I'm uh, an assistant uh, coordinator at uh, Cultura Inglesa, uh, an assistant, uh, academic assistant at the academic department. But up to last year, here in the, in the head office, in the head office, uh, and up until last year, uh, I was working as a coach and mentor. So I was actually going to lessons, uh, seeing teachers uh, teach and deliver the lesson. I was giving them feedback, uh, and I was helping them to prepare lessons as well. And during this time, I became aware of a common challenge that I saw in my lessons as well, uh, which is that many times we start activities by giving students a topic, something to talk about, uh, and I think we expect that that activity is going to take a while, you know, like 10 minutes. They're going to talk for 10 minutes. And then they talk for 30 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> and they have nothing more to say. Uh, they think that the activity is finished. Uh, it's something that's very difficult to manage. And it has an impact on the effectiveness of our teaching. Uh, and it has an impact on the way we plan our lessons. So this is something that I became very much aware of. It was on my mind. It was a difficulty that I had as well. It was something that I saw constantly in different lessons. Um, and it was something that I wanted to find out more about. Why does this happen anyway? And then talking to uh, other teachers, to my colleagues, uh, what I found out is that for some reason, uh, again, I think we expect that students will have a lot to talk about. They don't. And then why does that happen? Is it the topic? Is the topic not interesting enough? This was something that we thought about. I think in particularly with uh, adolescent groups, what happened was they would talk for 30 seconds, they would finish, and then they would start talking in Portuguese to their friends uh, about different things, but certainly not about the lesson. It was not connected. And then, I again, is this something that, that's a result of the topic? Is the topic not interesting? Uh, is it a sign that students are not behaving appropriately? Uh, I think all of these questions come to mind. Is this something that you have experienced? Yeah, so activities, they, they go by very quickly all the time. Mm -hmm. So what can we do? How can we prolong this? How can we, uh, can we get more out of the activities? This is something that I started thinking about. Uh, and at the same time, in my context, uh, I was helping to uh, prepare lessons for a new course, uh, Cultura Inglesa. And it was a course that used uh, uh, task-based teaching, task-based learning. Uh, and because of this, at the time, at the same time, I was reading about tasks and what a task is, uh, and what the difference is. And somehow I put the two things together in my head. And I think the result of that is going to be this presentation. So first of all, um, again, how much can we get, how much mileage can we get out of a topic? If we ask students to, for example, uh, talking pairs, working pairs, talk about your grandparents. Use the phrases in the box. Working pairs, talk about your grandparents, use the phrases from the box. Does this sound like a familiar activity? Yeah. Where would you find this activity? W where, in the book, maybe? Yeah. So maybe there is a, a table, picture. OK. So we might use different materials as well. But the thing is, does it sound like something that will generate a lot of conversation, in your opinion? Thinking about your groups. Here's another very common one, I think, if you look at this one. Yeah. Talk about your favorite film. Here we have a little more. Explain why you recommend it. 
Now, if I ask you right now, turn to your partner, talking pairs about your favorite film and why you would recommend it, would you be engaged? Yes. Yeah? Why? What's interesting? The movie? Because it's your favorite film. Okay. And it's my reality. I go to the movie. You go to the movies. Yes. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Any other impressions about this? Mm -hmm. Because of that? The plot. So if you're interested in the movie naturally, then of course it's going to generate conversation. It's going to get you talking. But what if you're not interested in films? Mm. It could be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It could be. So maybe if they had previous contact, if they know something about it, it's going to get them interested. Uh, but overall, do you think that your students, think about your context. If you gave them this activity, would you be able to get 10 minutes of conversation from them? Yeah? You think so? Too long? Yeah. Mm. Okay. <laughs> so they need support. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so again, it's important to give them support, to scaffold this in order to make the process happen more naturally. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. It could be. Again, it depends on the students, yeah. right? Uh, we have to understand what they like, what they enjoy, what interests them as well. Um, if you look at this one, write four sentences about your favorite pastime. Say them to your partner. Does that sound like an engaging activity to you? If I ask you right now, please write four sentences about your pastime and then say them to your partner. Would you be interested? <laughs> <laughs> you could write a book about it, yes. It could be. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, what about discuss the importance of nature conservation in your area? Are you very excited about this? <laughs> and here in Sao Paulo, maybe not so relevant. <laughs> Talk about dog okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but if you talk about pets, again, they're familiar with this. Uh, are we going to help them develop more by talking about what's familiar every time? It's a challenge, isn't it? We need to push them into something unfamiliar, into unfamiliar territory so that they can learn more. But at the same time, the unfamiliar is often boring. It's often uninteresting and abstract. So this can be a real challenge. Uh, sometimes, even if it's a very real life somehow, what are the advantages of throwing a big or a small party? Discuss which is best. Do you think this is something your students would be interested in talking about? OK, two options. Teens, maybe? But even with teens, do you agree that what might happen is they say, I like big parties. Well, I like big parties, too. <laughs> Done. <laughs> the conversation, it lasted five seconds. OK? So again, wh how, when is this conversation finished? When? It's finished when you have nothing to say. But the instructions here, they don't tell you exactly how much to talk about this. Oh, yes. mm -hmm. uh, and one more example. Are you a busy person? 
take turns describing the busiest day of the week for you in trios. I think adults might be really interested in this, right? I think adults enjoy talking about this. Teens, yeah. Teens, they have lots on uh, nowadays, right? Many activities, many school extracurricular things. Overall, do you think that these activities would be interesting? Would they generate a lot of conversation? No. Lots and lots of conversation? No. Probably not. Not in this way. Okay, not in this way. So there is definitely something that we have to do about this. Uh, a couple of other examples I have here from course books, but they're very similar. So for example, have you been in any uh, social situation where you haven't uh, known what to do? Ask other students their opinion about what you should have done. What's more complex here is the language, right? <laughs> but would you say that the activity is more complex? They have to use more complex language. Uh, discussing groups, are policies uh, like those described by William At Atkinson, so there's a text that they read. Are policies described in the text common in schools in your country? What do you think of his ideas? So again, this might generate a little bit of discussion. Uh, the other example here, I know it's kind of small, but it's a mind map, and students would have to categorize the words in the mind map, include two new words, uh, and then they have to talk about the ideas. They also have some sentences that they can use to help, like, uh, I'm going to see a concert. Oh, really? And then they have to continue the conversation. Do you think that this is a natural conversation? Natural. Is it a natural way to start a conversation by reading a text, categorizing vocabulary items? Is this what you do in real life when you talk to your friends? No. Do you start by categorizing items no. and then? Yeah. No. So again, this is what normally happens though, isn't it? In the classroom, these are the kind of, uh, kinds of activities that we often provide. But how much conversation can they really generate? How much engagement can you really get out of this? Overall, my personal perception of activities like these uh, is that students, they often perform the activities hastily, in a rush, right? I just want to finish the activity. If I can do it in 10 seconds, awesome, great. That's what they want to do sometimes. Depending on the activity, right, they give monosyllabic answers. So, yeah, do you like parties? Yes. Do you like big parties? No. <laughs> so again, the a conversation is not very engaging. Yes or no. Yes or no. Or maybe very short. A little. <laughs> uh, students, they may, might also run out of things to say after a minute or two. So they might be trying, but there's only so much that they can say. They don't really talk about this in everyday situations. So th even if they want to, they just don't have any more ideas. Uh, and again, when these things happen, they switch to Portuguese because they're not on task anymore. And then we might interpret the use of Portuguese in different ways. We might see it as a discipline problem. Do you guys sometimes perceive this as a discipline issue? They're talking in Portuguese, it's discipline. But sometimes it's not. Sometimes they really just don't know what to say. They're really just not engaged. So this is my personal uh, opinion of activities like these. And I think there are shortcomings uh, because again, these perceptions, I think they are the symptoms. But what are the problems behind these symptoms? They have to do with the types of activities that we propose. So for example, uh, the activity about talking about the busiest day of the week. All right, turn to your partner and talk about the busiest day. It's very artificial. So that's again, one uh, main shortcoming. And then Again, are you going to talk for 10 seconds, 30 seconds, two minutes? When are you finished? Those activities, they don't tell students how much they should do or the extent to which they should discuss. Uh, they do not provide a tangible outcome and there is no real sense of completion. So you don't know when you're finished. 
Uh, they lack clear purpose or structure because again, if you say talk about this, okay, but what do you mean talk about? Am I just giving my opinion? Am I going to describe what it is? Am I going to compare my opinion with yours? Talk about is very generic. We don't know what it means. Uh, and because students do not engage the activities, they fail to develop fluency, right? Because if they're going to develop fluency, they need opportunities where they can talk for longer, uh, a longer time, for longer stretches, right? Uh, and overall, they do not develop key strategies in communication, mostly because they don't have the opportunity to control the interaction, right? When we set up activities like this, it's the teacher who controls it, right? All right, guys, talking pairs, start. And then we might say next, talk about this idea. So we interrupt the conversation and we move on for them. And then when the time is up, we say now we're done. Is this what happens in a real conversation when we're at a bar talking with friends? No, we start the conversation, we continue. We change the topics, don't we? We control this. We finish the conversation. For example, let's say you're at the bar talking to your friends and you need to get up and go to the, to the restroom, for example. We, we have strategies in conversation to do this, to, to say that we're leaving, to excuse ourselves, to come back and find our place in the conversation again, to help our friends when they are uh, entering the conversation, right? To paraphrase what has been happening, to put them back in, but not in activities like this because it's not natural. It's not real conversation. So again, I think one of the main shortcomings is that we don't give students an opportunity to develop management of discourse because they don't need to. We are doing it for them. So I, I believe these are the main shortcomings of activities like those uh, from the beginning. And again, it doesn't work because learners are not motivated. But then what motivates learners? We mentioned the topics, right? So if the topic is interesting, there's more motivation. But is there anything else? <coughs> what else can motivate learners? So if you give them autonomy, right? Maybe they choose what they talk about. So giving them autonomy is definitely one way. Perfect. Or something that uh, is happening at mm -hmm. that moment. Mm. Or it has happened that, that in the morning, if you yeah. want to say yes, or, or if it's yes, or yes. Mm -hmm. You have to talk about it in the response. Mm -hmm. So let's say there's something on the news, right? Something big. <laughs> They're naturally talking about this uh, outside the classroom already. It's relevant, it's current. So when, when we bring it into the classroom, we're making it more relevant. So that's another way. Well, according to um, Dernier, people usually enjoy a task if they play an essential part in it. And if you consider those conversations, those topics, students aren't really, they don't have an active part in doing the activity. Right, because the teachers, they control what happens. Uh, we tell them when to start, we tell them when to switch topics, we tell them when to stop. So they don't have any real uh, essential part in it. Uh, and, and this means that it's less stimulating for them. It's less enjoyable. Uh, if we want them to enjoy, to engage, we have to make them more active. We have to make them active participants. So again, giving them autonomy to choose would be one way of doing that. Uh, Dernier also says that to increase student motivation, we have to promote cooperation among the learners. Yeah. yeah. But then what, what's cooperation? Is it the same as talking together? No. It's not. Talking together is not cooperating. Cooperation means that there is something that we want to achieve together, doesn't it? We need to get something done. There's a goal there. He says, uh, more specifically, cooperation means that we have to set up tasks in which teams of learners are asked to work together towards the same goal. So there is a clear goal that they want to achieve together. 
in order to achieve that, they have to cooperate. They have to uh, work together. And in terms of assessment, we have to take into account the team product, what they're doing as a group, what they can come up with as a group, and not just the individual production. And again, in order to promote motivation, uh, we also have to provide students with some social training sometimes. Because again, in the classroom, the activities might be very artificial. If we want them to manage the conversation, to initiate, to transition from topic to topic, to uh, finish the conversation, we have to teach them how to do this. Right? Because in many, uh, many cases, the language that we're teaching in that lesson is not really connected to doing this. Right? So for example, uh, in the situation about the busiest day, it's probably a lesson with vocabulary maybe, different activities, like go to school, go to work, wake up. It might be something related to the present simple, talking about routine, but we're not teaching them how to initiate, how to start a conversation. So again, we have to provide them uh, with social training as well in order to make this more relevant and more natural. Small talk. Initiating small talk, engaging with other people. Um, and then again, in order to provide these goals, what exactly are they? How do they impact students' performance? Uh, and Dorney mentions uh, four mechanisms by which goals affect students' performance. They say that having a goal in, a, in a, an activity, it's going to direct attention uh, and effort towards something more relevant. So it's going to engage students and motivate them to participate. And then it's also going to limit their attention so that they're focused on something that they're doing together. They're not going to be as distracted by something else. Remember what we said in the beginning, in many cases, sometimes in, in the adolescent classroom, they talk for 30 seconds, they turn to each other and they start talking ab uh, about something else in Portuguese, they're not engaged anymore. They've been distracted. But if they have something with a clear goal, something they have to achieve together, they're more likely to work collaboratively, to engage and stay on task until that goal is achieved. So this is one of the, uh, the main points, one of the main benefits of having a goal. Uh, another one is that if they have a goal, they will regulate uh, the amount of effort in, in order to adjust what they're doing. So again, what's the complexity of the task? It could be something simple, but it could, could be something a lot more structured and complex. Uh, and depending on what you're offering or what you're proposing, it's going to get them to engage at different levels as well. Uh, the persistence until the goal is accomplished again, right? If there is a clear objective in something that they're doing collaboratively, they know that they're not finished until the goal has been reached, which is something that doesn't happen if we just ask them to talk about something. And again, if they have to work collaboratively and there is a clear outcome, then they're gonna have to talk together and negotiate meaning, negotiate strategies, they will have to come up with ways to do all of those things that happen in natural conversation. So again, related to all of this, I think there is a clear difference between just activities that we have in the classroom. So for example, common classroom activities. It could be something related to pronunciation, right? It could be something like drilling, repetition, maybe asking students to read something together out loud for one reason or another, but these are not natural activities that happen outside the classroom. These are not things that people do uh, cooperatively towards a common goal. So it's important that there is a clear outcome. Willis, uh, Jane Willis says, if there's no outcome to achieve, then learners have no real reason uh, to set themselves goals. If there is no outcome to achieve, they, have, they don't have a reason to try to communicate effectively. They have no real reason to talk to their partner and try to convince them of something if the situation is artificial. But if they have to work together to reach a consensus, they have to agree. 
they have to negotiate, for example. They will have to explain until the partner understands. And uh, in David Noonan, he also mentioned that any structured language learning endeavor which has a particular objective, appropriate content, and a specific working procedure, a way of doing it, uh, in a range of outcomes for those who underta undertake the task, mm -hmm. it's going to be more successful. So again, if you have a task that has a little bit more structure, there is a clear outcome, and the content is appropriate somehow, it's something relevant, it's something meaningful, then they're going to engage more readily, and they're going to work together. So overall, the benefits of having goal-driven tasks is that, again, the emphasis is on the learner. So students, they're doing something that's more real life without the intervention of the teacher, right? So again, they have to work together to negotiate meaning, to manage the conversation and interactions, and to manage their uh, time and resources and effort to achieve that goal. And as they do that, they're also gonna have to formulate language on the spot. Uh, and as a result of this, they also have opportunity to develop fluency, right? Because they're managing the interaction. They have to develop fluency in order to do this, and we're giving them an opportunity. Uh, Willis also states that carefully selected tasks will provide stimuli for learners to take part in complete interactions uh, and help to meet the criteria of motivation, which is one important component of le real learning. So again, all of this is going to be more effective and it's going to motivate students to engage with the task. So we had this whole thing about Go. Remember the tasks from before. <laughs> Working pairs, talk about your grandparents. What's the goal of this task? Is it a task? Is there a goal? Pointless. It's pointless. What exactly are they going to produce? Or what, what is it that we're trying to get from them? Talk about your grandparents, use the phrases from the box. Let me give them some beer. <laughs> <laughs> which is always a great way of starting a conversation, <laughs> right? But again, the aim here, the goal is really not to communicate exactly, is it? The goal is to use the phrases, isn't it? W it's just an excuse for them to, to use the phrases and we're trying to disguise it somehow. So to some extent, the, the kind of work that we're doing here, it's not fluency work, it's more related to accuracy, right? Somehow, because they have the phrases they have to use, they have to incorporate these phrases into what they're saying. What about the next one? Talk about your favorite film and explain why you recommend it. Do you guys feel comfortable with this one? It was more interesting, I think we said before. Uh, but again, it's more interesting maybe because the topic is already something that we find interesting. But how much conversation is this going to generate? Okay, I fully agree. It's just talk. So again, there is no clear go here. If we uh, ask students to do this, they don't know exactly what they have to perform. Talk, but talk for how long? Or uh, how many points do I have to, <laughs> to give, right? How many examples? This isn't very clear for students because again, it's not uh, a, a natural situation, right? When you're sitting uh, uh, in a bar with your friends, Nobody comes to you and says, all right, talk to your friend, tell them about your favorite film and why you recommend it. <laughs> this doesn't happen in real life, mm -hmm. but it's something that we consistently do in the classroom. Uh, and again, the same can be said for all the other examples that we looked at before. They don't really have uh, any sort of real purpose, right? It's, they're not pur uh, purposeful tasks. There's no reason for the other person to listen as well, right? Mm -hmm. I listen to my friends. Exactly. What are we going to do with the information after we talk about it? And then that's a great point because usually as they're talking, in many cases they're not really listening to each other, right? You're talking in my direction <laughs> and I'm not listening. I'm actually just thinking about and formulating the next sentence that I'm gonna say when I have to talk to you. 
because we're not actually engaged in a conversation. I'm just saying things and you're saying things back. So again, this is one of the pitfalls, one of the dangers of all of these activities. And again, this happens because there is no real goal behind them. So then what's the difference between activity and a task? This is something that I, I at first I, I couldn't fully grasp, but it's something that after doing some reading, it made complete sense. All of those activities that we do in the classroom, generically, they're activities, but tasks are something more specific. They're a specific goal. So we have clear structure. Uh, the end is clear, so we know what the objective is, what we have to achieve together. But in order to decide, how can we look at, for example, tasks from our course books and decide if they are tasks and decide if they're going to engage? I actually uh, found something that's very interesting. Uh, it's a set of questions that you can ask yourself when you examine. So. When is an activity a task? Uh, Willis and Willis, they offer the following criteria. The more confidently you can answer yes to each of these, the more task-like the activity is. So ideally, if, if you want to provide students with a task, you have to be able to say yes to every one of these questions. The more, the better. So will the activity engage learners' interest? Is there a primary focus on meaning? Is there a goal or an outcome? Is success judged in terms of the outcome? Because again, most of the time, we probably judge success in terms of the language that they're using. And sometimes not even a matter of how fluent they are, but a matter of how correctly, right, how accurately they're saying things. Uh, is completion a priority? So what's the priority of the task? Is it just talking? for no reason, talking as much as possible, is that the, the objective? Or is it really to complete a specific objective? Does the activity relate to real world activities? Is it something that would happen in life outside the classroom? So we need to be able to look at these questions and say yes. That's what determines whether something is. I'm already taking a picture at that point. I'm actually going to ooh, <laughs> hand out the questions to you. So <laughs> can you guys take one? and pass them back. <laughs> Here you are. Uh, I'm not sure whether we need more, but I do have a few more. Do you guys agree that these questions would help us determine whether a task would be engaging? Well, again, we're, uh, we have the assumption that if it's engaging, it's because it is a task, right? If there is no real purpose behind it, it's not a task, it's just an activity. That's the idea. Do we need any more in the back, or did everyone get one? Okay, perfect. So, <clears throat> are these mere activities or tasks? I'm going to give you guys a couple of minutes. I would like for you to think about it. Look at the... Uh, different possibilities, thank you very much. And ask the questions to yourselves individually. Which of these do you think you can say more yeses to, if any of them? I'll give you a minute for you to look at them. <laughs> I won't have time. Okay, so can you guys uh, share your thoughts with uh, a neighbor? Are there any yeses anywhere in your opinion? Mm 
That could actually happen, right? Actually, I've seen this happen just recently in a classroom. <laughs> we have many past times. Do you need a handout? Oh. Sorry, <laughs> they're stuck together. Here you are. Exactly. Well, then the next part is describing. So it depends, right? Because maybe if you're interested in talking, uh, th there's actually an expression for this. It's called busy bragging. People who like to talk about how much work they have to do. <laughs> and sometimes if you're this kind of person who enjoys talking about all the stuff that you have to do, you might say, oh my God, I have so many things to do. I have to do this. And then on Monday, I woke up early and, I blah, 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 and then you go on and on. But this isn't interesting for everybody. Some people might be interested, but then it's internal motivation. It's not the activity that brought this out, right? All right, guys. Have you found any yes? Did you say yes to anything, anywhere, <laughs> for any of the options? <laughs> Some maybes. Uh, <laughs> which one was the maybe? Okay. Okay. So again. The, the topic itself already, it might be very engaging if they like talking about films. I, in general, people often do enjoy talking about films. Any, any other possible yeses? Purple one. Is, uh, is this the purple one? I'm not very good with that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm not, this one? Yeah. yeah? Well, what, what did you say yes to here? Um, okay. Mm hmm. Perfect. Okay. Again, I think this can be very interesting for adults many times, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, I think in terms of uh, is it a, a real world activity, it could be. Uh, for example, at the end of the day or something, you come home and you talk to your spouse. How was your day? Oh my God, I had such a busy day. And then he's, <laughs> it's not necessarily a conversation. It's more like venting, right? You're getting things off your chest. Uh, but it's something that people do. But again, if you're not that kind of person, it's not going to happen naturally because it, it's not the activity that makes this happen, right? It's just your interest in it. 
<laughs> they, they must be very busy. They are very busy, in fact. It's funny, when we watch the news nowadays, we can see that they have dark rings, right? <laughs> the journalists are not getting any sleep lately. They have been working a lot. Yeah, that's definitely true. Well, I again, I think someone mentioned that maybe not, not really, maybes. And you also mentioned that some of the tasks, they're, they're almost good, but they would need some adjustments. Yeah? What, what exactly would you adjust then? What's the, the change? What could you change about them? About the paper film, mm -hmm. you could uh, tell them to tell a story using their presence. Okay. You may put too much more emotion in your film. Mm -hmm. yeah. And instead of discuss, decide. Okay. So again, when we say discuss, what does that mean exactly? Decide? There's more meaning there, isn't there? So again, if you notice, when we look at the activities, we do have to make some adjustments. Uh, when you say decide, you're, you're giving them more structure because there is something clear at the end. Uh, I think even here, discuss which is best. If you, the way it is, they might decide together, but they might not. They might just keep talking because the word discuss is a little bit ambiguous. It's not very clear. Mm. Uh, this one? Uh, sorry, is it this one or yes, this, no, this one? Okay. Again, the c I'm not very good with <laughs> which one is blue or purple. Uh, okay. It does. Yeah. Actually, just recently, it does. Uh, recently, I, I had a lesson talking about parties with my teenager. They were very excited because they're, many of the girls in the group, they are just about to turn 16. Oh. So naturally, they were very excited to talk about this. Uh, so it, it makes sense. They're expecting a party. They're thinking about a party. They're looking forward to it. It's relevant to them. But it might not be the case. Here's a, sorry? Yeah. <laughs> you might have to hold them back, yes. <laughs> so, <clears throat> actually, if you, if you look at this, are you a busy person? Take turns describing your busiest day of the week in trios. Again, the way it is, it's not very clear. But remember, with a little bit more structure, we can make it a lot clearer. So, for example, here is a sequence of possible activities. Think of the busiest day you've had recently. Describe your activities on that day. Compare and contrast with your group members. Decide who had the busiest day. And then from memory, report your decision to another group, justifying your selection. So at the end, you also have to go to another group and say, in, my, in our group, the person who had the busiest day was that person. And we believe that she had the busiest day because she has to do this. So it's very structured. In terms of how much conversation it generates, purple? <laughs> the, the purple, right? The purple or the green? Which one do you think will generate more? <laughs> so which one will, will generate more conversation in the classroom? The green. So. Here, if you tell them, uh, describe your busiest day to your, your colleague, again, they might talk for 30 seconds. It could happen, right? Oh, Monday is very busy for me because I go to school. <laughs> Done, uh, right? Therefore, you could turn this off if it's okay. Exactly. And then they, oh. they don't listen. Yeah. So what about you? Me too. <laughs> <laughs> so this could happen. Love yeah. Do you think that this is going to happen here? Again, if it, if it happens here, it's because they're not doing the activity, right? In order to really do this, it's going to take time because they have to go through all of the, the, sequencing, of, uh, the sequencing of the stages. And then if you think about what's different, what have we really changed from here to here? We have the structure. But remember, you suggested that we have to change the verb. 
So for example, here, instead of discuss, decide is going to be more goal driven. Do you see any, any verbs here that are more goal driven than talk about? So in, to some extent, the verbs, they provide this, don't they? They provide more structure. If you think about the actions behind these activities, talk. I can do anything and I'm talking, right? It doesn't mean that we have to do anything collaborative. Talk about, again, write sentences and say them. I don't even have to listen to you, right? Because say, <laughs> I can say it to the wall, actually. And it's not going to have any impact on, on my activity. The mirror. <laughs> well, actually, it could be a great uh, maybe activity to develop fluency if you say into a recorder so that you can listen after and see how you've done, how you organize the ideas, and so on. Uh, but it's not an interaction. It's not going to generate uh, strategies for leading, uh, for, for dealing with a situation in conversation. Um, so again, what are the advantages? Discuss. Again, it's kind of ambiguous. This one is a little more specific, right? Describe. Describe your busiest day. Describe is going to, to get more, I think. And then how can we decide then? How can we actually decide which verbs to use? One way to, uh, one tool that we can use when structuring these tasks is referring to Bloom's autonomy. Uh, so actually, again, I have the, the wheel here because I thought it was clearer to read. <laughs> but actually, I think when we think of Bloom's autonomy, we probably think about the pyramid. Uh, taxonomy, taxonomy, sorry. <laughs> so we actually think about the pyramid, don't we? And then at the base, we have very, very basic features, very basic aspects related to just knowing things, remembering things. It doesn't require much, right? So for example, talk about the busiest day of the week. I have to remember what the busiest day was so that I can say, so that I can report what I did. But <coughs> if we do something a little bit higher uh, on the pyramid, for example, describe and interpret or distinguish, it's going to require more work from me and it's going to get me more engaged in whatever task I'm doing. And then in terms of working collaboratively, if you go higher up, uh, verbs, analyze, compare, contrast, differentiate. If I have to work together in a group and together we have to analyze and compare to identify the similarities and differences, it's going to generate more conversation and it's going to work on higher order thinking skills. So again, the further up you go, the more engaging it's going to be and the more it's going to require from, from the students. So. Actually, when we look at all these verbs, they might substitute uh, the instructions in the original ideas there. If anybody wants, I have a, a QR code for you to scan, and it's the pyramid. Okay, I think some of you took pictures as well. So uh, again, maybe not all of these verbs are going to help us create a task. Some of them are very helpful, like categorize. They have to categorize something. Uh, they have to combine something. So maybe these are helpful. But remember the original tasks. I'm going to give you guys a, a few minutes. Think about the uh, the different verbs in the uh, in Bloom's taxonomy. Can you think of any substitutions that you could make, or any steps that you could add? Uh, take a minute, see which one you might be able to adapt, and once you have an idea, let's share it with somebody else. The pyramid. Uh, the <laughs> which one? Yeah. This one? No, it's not. It's code. The code. 
<laughs> sure. Okay. Do you want to take a picture of this? This. I think this one is easier to reach, maybe. If you'd like me to go back to the activity, yeah. Okay. Do you need any help? Do you need help to scan? Ah, good. Okay. <laughs> good. I'm not so good in That's okay. You got it. See? We help each other. Yeah. And then the third one? Yeah. Not right, for example, you use yeah. early instead of writing, and yeah. don't specify a number, for example, four sentences. Just mm -hmm. uh, talk a little bit about it, describe it, mm -hmm. this kind of thing. Yeah, we can add steps to this, probably, yeah. and then it's going to get more mm -hmm. from this. Um, but in, in this case, the way we look at it, we don't really see a context, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, talk about your favorite pastime. But why? <laughs> yeah. I mean, wh why are we talking about our favorite pastime? And then if you think about a real life situation, I think maybe somebody asks you, right, what do you like to do in your free time? Oh, I like doing this. Really? But how do you play that game? And then you also have to describe uh, what the activity is mm -hmm. and how, right? How it works. Describe the rules. What are the rules for this game or this activity? So uh, Yeah, exactly. So getting more, yeah. right? So uh, explain why. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe, I don't know, list the advantages and the disadvantages. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I if they're uh, talking about different activities, they can list the advantages and disadvantages and then decide on the best one for our friend. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't like to read. Okay, so this is not the best activity. How about this one? Uh, it doesn't take much time, so again, they have to list the advantages and disadvantages, and this is going to help them decide, because then we have steps, right? Uh, it, it would be something like consider, consider different activities, list the advantages and the disadvantages, uh, select the best one for this person. So you have steps. Mm -hmm. It's going to give more structure.
Okay? Did you guys get some possibilities, some ideas for adjusting these? Okay. Okay. So list, using list. And then listing, again, if you think about Bloom's taxonomy, listing is going to be recalling, remembering, right? So it's going to be on the bottom. Or label. Okay. And then here, already we're going up on the pyramid, right? Because then labeling them in this way would be kind of like categorizing. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if they have to, li first, list. Second, categorize them, put them into categories or classify them according to the, the best age group or something that would be interested in it. It's going to require more thinking. It's going to generate more conversation and more time to produce this. Any other suggestions? Yes? Uh-huh. Okay. Because you think it's too specific. Okay. Okay. So it would be more general. If you th think about uh, discuss, what else can they do with this? Just discuss the reasons. Analyze. So maybe analyze the importance. Uh, explaining the impact that it has, and then anything else that they could do here? Hmm? Compare. So, okay. Okay. Ah. So uh, this, one, uh, this is a great one. So maybe, again, listing the different issues. So what are the issues related to nature conservation? Then they might list pollution, water pollution. They might be more specific. Uh, recycling or lack of recycling. They will make a list. Then they would have to select or maybe somehow prioritize them, perhaps rank them. Which ones have the biggest impact in our area? Why? Uh, so again, it's going to require more steps, and we're going up the pyramid, right? Because we're going to ask them to do things that are higher order thinking skills. So it's not just remember and say what the issues are, but say what the issues are, uh, and then analyze maybe what causes them. Uh, maybe what can you do? Yeah, perfect. So suggest ways, suggest ways in which you can help. Uh, and then maybe the next thing would be rank all of the suggested ideas and decide on which way would be most effective or maybe which way is easiest to implement in our houses, in our homes. Devise a campaign. Devise a campaign. So uh, what they could actually do, you could ask them to devise a campaign, which could be a poster, a leaflet, uh, something more concrete, which they can do with, uh, that they can do with all those ideas. At the end, you might even ask them to present the campaign, suggesting ideas for helping the environment, uh, and decide and vote on which of the ideas was the most effective. So actually, <laughs> this here, depending on how you structure, it could be an entire lesson, couldn't it? It could be an entire lesson, not just 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and, and then this is a uh, interpretation, isn't it? So uh, it's a little bit higher. It's interpret. So it's more than just say and remember. You have to interpret why, what it means, what the impact is. So again. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And then the reason why they might speculate and connect this to the issues related to the environment. Uh, and then actually here, it would be a great opportunity to bring in pictures of this, right? Yeah. Or maybe realia somehow, real, uh, uh, real things from the beach then, if that's what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. 
-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So w w why is it there? And then you could generate. Mm -hmm. You could ask them to analyze the impact of this and so on. Uh, I think one thing that uh, we're overlooking, though, if we think about the questions that we had before, do you think we would say more yeses now? Remember that maybe discuss the importance. So again, uh, suggest what the, actually list the problems, analyze the impact, suggest solutions, rank them uh, according to I don't know how, how easy they are to implement and decide on the best course of action. If we have something like this, can we say yes to all of these? Is it an answer to the question? We can say yes to more of them, right? Mm -hmm. I think one thing that's missing though still is the last one, perhaps, in the way that it is set up because does the activity relate to the real world, uh, to real world activities? Yes, people do this, but not in this way, right? Uh, not when the teacher says, all right, you guys are going to do this, so first do this, then do this, then do this, then do this. That's not what happens in real life. So we can still improve the task a little bit in order to best address the last point there. Think about this uh, activity here. Talk about how you like to celebrate your birthday. Very superficial. Not much there. Uh, I like to have parties. Right? Two seconds, done. We're finished talking. But we can turn it into something more structured. But first, really, we want to make it real life. So it's important that we contextualize it. So here's a, a context. Your best friend's birthday is coming up. You decide to throw a surprise party. You meet with your friends to discuss the details. You're going to organize this together. Is this something that people do in real life? Do we organize parties for a friend? We do. So again, this is going to be more real life. And we, here we have a context to provide the support. So instead of talk about, again, we need structure, we need steps, and we need verbs that are more specific. Here I have some, of, uh, some steps that I came up <laughs> with, but I have not included the verb. <laughs> So if you look at number one, blah, 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 <laughs> aspects need to be considered. What do you think the verb might be? List, list the aspects that need to be considered. Any other possibilities? Set, check, okay. Analyze perhaps. So again, I think in order to scaffold the activity, you may want to start from, uh, uh, again, thinking of Bloom's taxonomy. You may want, want to think with uh, lower order thinking skills first, maybe, and build up to higher order thinking skills. So if we just think about memory first, aspects, it could be list, list aspects, recall aspects, consider aspects, discuss aspects. What are the aspects? A budget. What do we need to do here with a budget? Establish, maybe. Decide, perhaps. Negotiate a budget. So again, depending on, yeah, depending on which verb you choose from the taxonomy, the more engagement it's going to generate. I'll give you guys a minute. See if you can think of other possible verbs for these.
convince. Perfect. This is going to take a lot of. Yeah. yeah. It, it's going to require more out of them, right? It's more work, more effort, more engagement in order to convince the other group. Yeah. All right. So sorry to cut you short. So again, I, I didn't have the verbs here, but when I thought about this situation here, these are the verbs that I originally came up with. <laughs> Lift the assets, negotiate a budget, suggest the possibilities, predict the advantages and disadvantages. And then if you think about the complexity of language, it also re requires more from the student, right? Because if it's listing, it's just, well, one thing that I thought about, one thing that we have to consider. Uh, if you think about suggest the uh, sorry, predict the advantages, we're speculating already. So one thing that might be important, so again, the, the level of language required is also higher. Select the most suitable option. Summarize the details of your decision and persuade other groups that your idea is the best. Right, so convince. Convince, persuade. <laughs> so again, by changing the wording, right? And I think, again, going back to learner autonomy, if you want to uh, develop autonomy in, in, in your learners, it's important that they're able to do the, uh, these things in English, not just use topic vocabulary or use the correct structure, but actually negotiating with other people, summarizing ideas, persuading other people. These are important aspects of communication. So by uh, structuring tasks like these, in a context, we can tick off more of those questions with yeses, and it's going to generate more engagement. Do you guys agree? So actually, I don't think we have any more time, but again, we had uh, the different tasks from before, we could do this with any of them. And again, three important elements, right? Think about what you want the outcome to be. What's the activity that they have to uh, negotiate towards together? What's the final goal? So again, it could be something like create a campaign uh, to promote more awareness of the environment and suggest possibilities, something like this. But then in order to reach that, they're gonna have to work through all the steps. And if we want to do this more uh, in a more student-centered way, instead of giving them the steps, we can give them the verbs and ask them to think about the order. So what do you have to do in order to reach this goal? <coughs> what do you have to do first? Well, I need to think about the aspects. Okay, so what are you going to do? And then you can ask them to choose uh, which functions they're gonna have to perform. Overall, I feel that in relation to the original task that we had there, something like this is going to generate a lot more engagement, it's going to generate a lot more conversation, it's going to be a lot more organic and natural, and it's going to give students opportunities to develop, to build strategies for speaking, negotiating, managing interaction, and so on, which overall would be a lot more effective, a lot more student-centered, and which is actually going to give us opportunities to diagnose uh, students' performance so that we can give them more effective feedback as well. All right, so. And give them more self-confidence. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. And you have my email here in case you wish to get in touch with me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much.